Yo, it's your boy Dragons of Thunder and I'm back live and direct with another video. Today's video, man, I had a special request about Navy Boot Camp and uh, from the homie Jashley Josh, I think, something like that on Instagram. Um, and I had a requ request a few months ago about it too, man, and I just forgot about it. And I've been meaning to do a Navy Boot Camp video. Um... Yeah, man, let's get started. The two main words to look for when you go to boot camp, Navy boot camp, is horrible and fun. Remember those two words that your boy uh, Watts told you about. Uh, horrible and fun. Just that's that narrows it down, and that's basically what it is. It's horrible fun. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, so let's start off with. Um, the flight, man, when you head off to boot camp, that was my first flight. That was my first time getting on a plane in my life. I was anxious. I was afraid, man. It was just spooky. Um, getting on a plane and going to military boot camp, man, that, that was that was a mind fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, it blew my mind. First plane, and I'm going to go to boot camp, military training. So, um... You get dropped off at the airport in uh, O'Hara. Uh, USO picks you up on a bus. You go out to uh, Great Lakes uh, Navy uh, boot camp place. Great Lakes Naval Station. So, you get dropped off in the middle of the night, midnight, one in the morning. Something crazy, man. Um, you go through process in the first three days. I believe P days or P1, 2, and 3. It might be 5. I don't know. I can't remember. But also, um, before we talk about the P days and boot camp in general, I went through boot camp back in 2004. Uh, so I went back in through 2004. Everybody before me in the 90s and 80s all talked crap in the 70s too. 70s, 80s, 90s. They all talked crap and said how easier it was, yada, yada, yada. Just like now, you have people like myself that went in in two th early 2000s, late 90s, middle 2000s, who are talking crap now in about 2020 and above, you know, saying how easy it is and this and that and yada, yada, yada. I believe they added two more weeks for you guys because all of the COVID bull crap. Man, that's a bunch of political hogwash, man. I ain't going to get into that, man, but let me finish about the generations before you. Don't let nobody tell you that it was super duper harder when they went through the same type of programming and the same type of uh, fitness and the same type of mental breakdown is still involved in boot camp. They may not be able to put their foot on your back or hit you or make you do push ups and sit ups on a freezing cold pavement or a burning hot pavement, but it's still hard. I don't care what nobody says. Mentally, they break you down. Um, yeah, man. Uh, so my my boot camp wasn't no harder than yours will be. Um, and I went through at the end of the stages of like the the physical stuff, you know, putting the foot on your back or pushing you somewhere. But it wasn't horrible. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day, they got punched on. You know what I'm saying? Just straight up. That's the only thing that I could think of that's worse than uh, we had or you guys will have. Um, the way they talk to you is still going to be the same. I, I think they changed it up a little bit, but man, you, you, you are going to get talked to worse than you ever been talked to in your life. Um, it just imagine some of the craziest stuff that can be said. They are going to say it to you. I was called a big, big, tall, brainless mother sucking banana. Like I was called crazy stuff, man. It was funny, but when you get off that bus, man, and they yelling and going crazy, keep your composure because they're going to be asking crazy questions. They're going to be asking your social security number. And remember, um, it's no such thing as 3100, 39, uh, 69, 29. Always remember, it's no double numbers. It's no such thing as a double number. All numbers are single in the military. So your social, you better say one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Don't don't do 69, 80, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Don't do nothing like that. 67, 89. 
Don't make numbers double, man, because you will be getting beat on the first day, man. On the first night, you will be getting beat. Uh, it's pathways you got to walk on. Um, all through boot camp, man, you got to pay attention to detail. And when I say pay attention to detail, man, I'm serious. Because people's lives are at stake in the military. Um, you may not think that the military is dangerous, but even for, for those of us who didn't go to war or wasn't in a war zone, um, it's a high chance for you to die just because your shipmate is not paying attention to detail. And I'm being honest. Like, uh, I believe, I think they said within the first year in boot camp, uh, we were at formation and, uh, in front of our racks, our bunks, we stepped out and, uh, he told us to take a look to our right, take a look to our left. And he said within the first year, one of you will be dead. And I was like, what? And uh, statistically, it's true. Somebody, one of, one of y'all gonna be dead, man, straight up. Um, so um, that's just something serious to think about, man. And I'm telling you to pay attention to detail. Um, the schedule is one of the most important things in boot camp, man. Um, they treat everybody the same, man. You are getting broke down mentally and physically. I will tell you, get your burpees in, uh, get your burpees in check, get your push-ups in check, get your sit-ups in check before you leave. Um, make sure you can run that mile and a half in the time you are supposed to before you leave. And one of the major things is swimming. If you can't swim, I don't see the point of you going to the military. They will teach you how to swim if you can't, so that's a good thing. Um, but it's embarrassing, man. You go to, you pick all these services and these branches, and you pick the Navy, and you can't swim. It blows my mind, man. So many people got asthmaed and pushed back into different divisions. Um, people got, people got discharged because they couldn't swim, and you joined the Navy. Like, come on now. Uh, but to be real. Marines, Air Force, I believe, yeah, even the Air Force, I, I believe every branch has some kind of swimming uh, procedure or swimming process or something like that. But, yeah, know how to swim before you leave, man. Um, don't get asthma or kicked out because you can't swim. It's embarrassing. Um, so, have your swimming in order, your running, and uh, push-ups and sit-ups, man. That, and I'm serious. Take it serious. Like, if you can't do those push-ups, sit-ups, and that run, you're gonna have hell in boot camp, man. You gonna when when the division is off doing gun training or different other stuff, yada yada yada, they'll make you go to extra practice to swim. You'll you'll miss certain stuff to go practice to swim, man, or get your run down or something. But yeah, man, Navy boot camp is horrible and fun. Um I will say, man, a lot of people say stay under the radar um i couldn't stay under the radar i was six four light-skinned big guy um i could not stay under the radar i was picked on immediately what get your head like it was it that was ruthless to me man i became uh the master master at arms in my division and i loved every bit of it um i didn't abuse my power you know i was cool calm collect and i did not abuse my power um, a lot of young guys, when they go in between 18 and 20, they will abuse their power. You know what I'm saying? If they are Pac, A Rock, you got different positions within your division. I will tell you guys, stay away from Nasty Nine. You do not want to be a part of the Nasty Nine. They clean up the uh, compartment, they clean up the head, the bathroom. It's some of the nastiest crap on earth. Uh, Man, we had some of the weird, they picked the weirdest people. They picked the weirdest people and the people they don't like to be a part of the Nasty Nine. It's funny. Um, but Nasty Nine is horrible. It's, ugh. Yeah, man, I was mastered at arms, but I, I, I was 21. I had just turned 21 that month before I left. And uh, I was kind of more, you, you see the age difference between the 18, 19 year olds, the 20, 21 year olds, and then 25 and up. We had a guy that was 35, man. I hung around him, talked to him. And then there was another guy that was 30. Um, and then my homeboy, Wes, uh, Worthy. Worthy, man. He was 24, I believe, or 25. 
and I chill with the older guys and talk to the older guys. I was cool with the younger guys too because I was right in the middle. But yeah, man, uh, be aware of the young guys that are A, A Rocks and R Pocs. Man, they will abuse their power. Um, R R R R R Poc was uh, the main leader of the uh, division. He was a snitch and he was he was a lame man. He was one of them kids who wanted to be a Navy SEAL um nerdy guy you know i he didn't go on to be a seal but he was one of them nerdy weird guys man and he abused his power badly yes he did um so you are oh man i forgot to my boot camp uh ball stick uh gibson man rubain cool ass dude that's your boy young watts uh, this dude was a part of Nasty Nine. Cool dude. He's part of Nasty Nine. Uh, this guy is uh, Wales. I can't remember his first name. Me and Wales, we went to Captain's Mask in boot camp. Um, I lost my E3. Uh, they bust me down to E1. And uh, it was amazing times. <laughs> that dude, he did become, uh, I, I think he be became a diver or a seal. This guy was funny, man. One of the funniest guys, these two. And this guy was from uh, Africa. I can't remember what part. This Jamaican guy, arrogant as hell, always causing problems. Big mouth for no reason. I couldn't stand him. He 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 eventually became cool, but he got a big-ass mouth, man. I couldn't stand it. Um, I'm going to take a picture of this real quick. So, yeah, man. I forgot I had that in here, man. My wife, uh, My wife put that up in here. And uh, I had a lot of uh, training in uh, A school, C school. I went to I went to a few different schools in uh, in the military, in the Navy, because I was a gas turbine technician, man. And I'll tell stories about that later. Y'all see the Navy flag? I need to get a new one. But uh, yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh, nasty nine. Oh, the leaders and uh, positions in boot camp. Um, a lot of people they say stay under the radar, but I will be honest, man. If you if you if you want to be Joe Navy and you want to get ranked, I I, I was an E five. Um, I went to Captain's Mask three times. I went to Captain Mask at boot camp. I went to Captain Mask in my sh my first ship, and then I went to Captain's Mask on my shore duty. Um, I was busted down three times, and I still made E five. Um, all you have to do, man, is be a great worker, man. I'm gonna be honest. Do your work, stay on your grind. In boot camp, everything that you see going on in boot camp with the snitching, uh, the chatty patties, the political stuff, everything that you see in boot camp, you will see it on your first duty station and beyond. That's just the real hardcore facts about it. Um, I would, I would, I would stay away and keep my stuff squared away when you see uh like the people that abuse power. Those same people that get positions in boot camp and abuse their power are going to be the same guys that make E6, E7, E5, E8, whatever. They're going to make those ranks and they're going to abuse their power, man. Like they're going to try to talk to you like you ain't S-H-I-T. Um, those guys are lames, man. Real talk. Serve your country with pride and uh, do your job and stay away from the nonsense. Um, when you go in young, I'm telling you, man, stay away from trouble. Um, a lot of people don't realize when I got to boot camp, uh, my RDC was telling me, you know, everything that you ran from, like poverty, the hood, whatever you ran from in the real world is in boot camp. It's in the military. You got gangs. You got rapists. You got killers. You got drug dealers. You got you got criminals in the military straight up. Um, so whatever you are running from, you have to mentally prepare yourself to stay away from it. Um, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of criminal activities in the military. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like me saying that, but it's the truth. Um, sexual harassment is horrible in the military, especially for women. Um, even myself as a man, you know, it was women in the, in the military who did certain stuff to me that, that could be considered sexual harassment. So, um, anyway, boot camp is horrible and fun. 
Um, the schedule, like I say, is very important. Attention to detail, folding your clothes, the way you walk, the way you march, the way you do exercises, pay attention to detail. Um, eating, you know what I'm saying? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are the most amazing times in boot camp. At the beginning, you will not have a lot of time to eat. I don't know if it was two minutes or what it was, or if the first guy got done, everybody was done. I can't remember what it was, but I never used to eat fast in my life, and I was so mad because I had to eat so fast. And now you cannot pay me to eat fast. I eat slow as hell. I chew every piece of food in my mouth, and I enjoy my food, man. I will be the last one eating in my family every time because that kind of hurt my heart. Like, I had to eat so fast, man. It was sickening, bro. I was hurt. Like, what? Uh, I think the first couple of times I didn't even get to finish my food. And uh, you got to chew pretty fast and swallow, man. Sometimes you can't even chew it all the way up. You just swallow and go. Um, but they do get kind of laxed on that towards the middle and end, and you will get more time to eat. Other than that, man, you have to be mentally strong and physically fit. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you will get through, man. So if you want to go under the radar, radar and not be noticed, go ahead and do it that way. But if you want to make rank and make the military, the Navy a career, you need to get you a position on the team for your division so you can get some rank before you get out of there. Um, other than that, man, I don't have much to say. Um, I can't talk about battle stations. I won't talk about battle stations. I did sign some crap to say I won't talk about it. Um, I believe, though, it's people that talk about it, and, and it's places you can find it. But uh, I ain't that type of guy. So go find it somewhere else if you want to know about battle stations. Um, other than that, it sucks and it's fun. Um, some of the most horrible parts of it, I had a newborn son, 11 days old, and my wife back in Oklahoma. And uh, not being able to talk to my wife, it was horrible, man. Like, uh, you don't get to talk at all, man, in the beginning. You get one phone call, you tell them you're sending a box, yada, 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 and you hang up on them in their face. Um, after that, it seems like a whole month go by and you don't talk to nobody in the outside world. Um, but that time might be different now. And uh, you just it's just kind of miserable not being able to talk to your loved ones. And for me, I had a newborn child. I didn't know anything that was going on. Um, I finished boot camp, uh, went to my duty station, took leave for a couple of weeks. And uh, I really missed the first year of my son's life because of deployment and boot camp. But that's, I'm man, that's the sad part about it. Um, I don't really think the military is for a, a family guy. You know, if you really, if you're a family guy, I don't, a married man, I don't think it's for you. But, I mean, different stuff for different people, man. But I enjoyed it. And that's some of the most horrible parts of it is missing your family and being away from your family. Uh, you have to be strong mentally, too, if you go in married, man. They're going to talk a lot of crap about your wife back home getting banged. Crazy stuff, man. But... If you and your wife are uh, if you and your wife are bonded the proper way, and y'all are one fret flesh, and y'all truly love one another, man, it'll be fine. Uh, other than that, um, I can't think of nothing else about boot camp. I think we got to go to the store one time. The NEX is the Navy Exchange. That was fun and amazing. That was at the end, I believe. Um, it's just horrible and fun, man. Uh, when you're marching, when you're out there marching in the uh, 10 feet Chicago, Illinois uh, snow in the middle of winter, man, and you just marching, man, and your face is, your face is froze and, and your lips are busted because uh, they chapped because they dry from the freezing cold, and man, you just want to quit. I, man, I thought about jumping over that wall a few times. I ain't going to lie. Like... It's times where it's very, very depressing, man, and it's uh, it, it it's horrible mentally, man. It really is. Like it just is. I can't explain it. Um, the fun part is too, man. It's great, amazing fun. Like um, being in the military, uh, being around your brothers and sisters in arms, is some of the best stuff on earth. But it's times where it is depressing, man, and it's hurtful uh, mentally and spiritually. 
So make sure you are strong spiritually, mentally, and physically before you head off to boot camp. Um, be mentally stable, man, and uh, pay attention to detail. So that's really all I got, man. Um, that's just it, man. Uh, anybody want to hear some stories about my first ship? Or my shore duty, man, let me know, and we can chop it up. And I'll tell you all of the beautiful countries I went to down in uh, down in Central and South America and all over yonder, man. Went to a bunch of countries. You guys have fun. Thrash that like button and pound that subscribe button. And drop a comment down below. Drop, drop a comment. Fang, F-A-N-G, if you watch the whole video. Fang, F-A-N-G. Bang in the comments if you watch the whole thing, man.